Well, we just started construction at Sonny's place of a 70 foot diameter clear span timber frame octagon. This is a really special project for us. This is gonna be one of the largest clear span timber frame structures in all of New England. So we already have the main posts up for the octagon. These timbers in this project are all Douglas fir select structural timbers. You notice these posts are tripled up at the corners to gain the compression forces that we needed with huge steel base, base plates. One of the neat things about the design of this timber frame is we wanted to design and construct this without traditional mortise and tenon joinery. In the end, our goal is to have these base plates be the only steel you see in the entire project. The whole idea behind this octagon is the client wanted to put a 50 foot diameter carousel in the middle. This octagon is part of a larger project. Behind you'll see the conventional frame portions that we already completed. That'll house a laser tag, a restaurant, as well as an arcade facility. This project requires a high level of precision, which can only be matched with our state-of-the-art CNC machine. You can see how the angled brace comes in on such a steep angle, housed in the mortise pocket perfectly tight, no tolerance. These are massive posts. These posts here are 10 by 14 posts, crippled up together and 18 feet tall. It requires a scissor lift and special equipment just to reach the top. In areas where traditional joinery was just not strong enough, we embedded steel plates and steel spline plates that'll be all hidden within the timbers. So in the end, all you will see is wood and joinery and the oak pegs. All the steel is confined and concealed within the timbers. A commercial project of this scale took us much design and engineering and many months of planning. We're so excited to finally see it starting to come together. So up here we're going to give you a bird's eye view of the octagon. You can see the expanse of the 70 foot diameter octagon going together. So this portion of the octagon is what we call the tension ring. This, this whole ring is in tension loads from the rafters. So our next step is to go and set up the compression ring and that's what all the rafters will sit onto. To connect the corners of the octagon, we've designed wind bracing. That's what we're installing right now. There's actually 50 inch long steel rods that go within the timber to hold everything together and help support the tension loads from wind bracing. So the tension ring, like I mentioned, is 70 foot in diameter. The next step when we install the compression ring, that is 26 foot in diameter. So the compression ring, we're gonna build up on temporary staging, and that's getting set 31 feet off the concrete floor. We'll set something underneath it. It doesn't have to be leveled. It's a donut. And it's going to have to be high enough to clear that. Thing. Right. The scaffolding is designed to hold all that weight anyway. Right. My only thing is, if it's out of my way, mm. how far out is it? So today is day three at Sonny's place and today we are working on assembling the compression ring that will be raised up 35 feet in the air. The compression ring as you can see is made of glue lamb Douglas fir timbers. The reason these timbers are glue lamb is because we need a kiln dried compression ring. What we don't want is the compression ring to shrink. So it's kiln dried, it won't shrink if the compression ring shrunk, the rafters would drop down a little bit and that is not acceptable. This connection that we're working on right now is a really critical connection for the timber frame. There's actually going to be two steel plates that connect this compression ring and all the rafters are going to come sit right here on the hips and terminate into this into this member. On top of the compression ring is where we're going to build the cupola to finish off the top of the timber frame. The cupola will sit right on top of this base. So right now we have two parts of the compression ring assembled and there's six more to go to make the octagon. This compression ring alone is going to weigh about 7,000 pounds when it's all assembled. The cupola on top is going to be another 6,000. So this is going to be a huge pick for our crane. We have a 90 ton, a huge crane coming in to set this all up in the place. It should be fun. In terms of section, this is one of the biggest section sizes in the timber frame. This boss pin was cut out of a 16 by 16 glue lamb timber. 
This will be the crown jewel of the timber frame. This is going to be sitting way up high in the cupola, and this is where all the rafters come and terminate together at one point of the octagon. Well, today is day four. We have the compression ring built and in place down here in the concrete floor. And now we're assembling the cupola portion of the octagon. And you can see here how we have the cupola octagon coming together and the huge 16 by 16 boss pin with the angled supports tying it up to the main hip rafters. Once we finish assembling this cupola, we're also going to apply the decking. The decking is going to be a 2x8 Douglas fir decking with a V-joint that you can see from the underside. The nice way is to try to build everything on the ground as much as possible to save the, the work up in the air. And this compression ring with the cupola is going to be a whopping 13,000 pounds that needs to get lifted up. This guy is my safety guy. He yells at any time, at any point. He said, if you're notified, we're shutting everything down. Okay, we're gonna start picking it up. And again, don't go underneath until he's closed. Once he's closed, then we'll drop it down. Well, today is raising day at Sunny's Place in Summers, Connecticut. Today, we're gonna be raising the roof system of the 70-foot clear span octagon. We built this compression ring and the cupola and the floor inside the octagon to have a nice level space to work off of. We have already just craned it outside of the building, set it here in place. This compression ring's a whopping 26 foot across the two sides. You can see the compression ring has all been assembled. At the corners, there's heavy steel reinforcements. This right here is where the hip rafter is gonna tie into. It's a bolted connection. And as we move across here, you can see all the connections that we've designed. All these connections will be hidden within the Douglas fir timbers in the end. You won't see any steel. And on top of that staging, we're going to set the compression ring, fly it up into the air with these two massive cranes, and set that into place about 31 feet off the concrete floor. Once that compression ring's in place, we're going to be taking the hip rafters. These are these members right here. These hip rafters are 10 by 19, 26 feet long. That's a huge Douglas fir timber. These hip rafters are gonna fly up one by one and connect into the eight corners of the octagon compression ring. We're making our way around the compression ring sitting in the main hip rafters right now. We've got the six hip rafter flying into place and these hip rafters we're setting are the main carrying support system of this octagon. These hip rafters are essentially carrying much of the weight of this compression ring. So as the hip rafters drop in place, we have to lock them into the tenon on this triple post and into the steel bracket up on the compression ring. Today is the second day of the roof raising with the two cranes set up in place. We had a great day yesterday. It was a critical day for us getting those eight hip rafters set in place onto the compression ring. That was a critical point in the raising of this octagon. So this morning we're starting by installing the tension strapping on the corners of the octagon. Those are specially designed steel straps to withhold a tension load of about 45,000 pounds. So after that's complete, we'll be working on the next step, which is setting the intermediate rafters around the frame and then followed up finally by the jack rafters and the final crown jewel of the timber frame, which is the cupola, which we have already pre-built and sitting on the ground ready to go up in the air. We're making great progress here on raising day. We have all the intermediate rafters coming into place and now we're dropping the secondary rafters in. It's quite a task today. It's kind of like threading a needle between the timbers to get them all into place. But everything's dropping in smoothly and the timber frame's starting to take shape. Looking down from the top, this roof was designed to look like a star. You'll see the star pattern start coming to shape as we assemble all the rafters. You remember the 7,000 pound compression ring sitting on the scaffolding behind me. The forces of these rafters pushing up has already lifted the compression ring about one inch off the scaffolding. It's actually not even sitting on it anymore and that's just what we wanted. Today is day three and the final day of our raising here at Sunny's Place. We are continuing to raise the rafters 
up into the air. We're setting all the jack rafters and the intermediate rafters right as we speak. This is a really complicated detail right here on this timber frame. We call this the tangle of timbers. You have a post coming up intersecting with a hip, a brace, a wind brace, and two intermediate rafters. It's a really complicated joinery. We're about to set the cupola on the 70 foot clear span octagon behind me. In a minute, it's going to rise 35 feet above the sky and sit down on the compression ring. It's going to be quite a job to get the 7,000 pound cupola stable and set perfectly on all eight of its knife plates up on top. We'll have a timber framer, one in each corner. To set this in place, it's going to be quite a feat. Well, the cupola was just inches away from sitting down in its final place on top of the compression ring. This is the defining moment where our hard work, our design and engineering pays off. When we started this morning, the compression ring was one inch off of the temporary staging. Once we set this 7,000 pound cupola on, making it a 13,000 pound assembly, it did not move one inch. Well done on the engineering. We had a great time raising this timber frame octagon. Now it's all up and complete, and our great country timber frame crews are making great progress with construction. We now have the enclosure system going on, the roof decking in place, and the SIP insulation panels. We'll go on and check out the progress. So for the ceilings, we chose to go with a beautiful 2x8 Douglas fir tongue and groove ceiling. This is a premium ceiling that matches the Douglas fir, the timber frame, and inside it just actuates all the timbers and is gonna make for a beautiful feel inside this new octagon. So right now we're working on installing the sit panel insulation for the building. Right now we're using the machine to get the sit panels lifted up on the roof. Now these are the sit panels. What a sit panel is, it stands for structural insulated panel. This is spray foam insulation sandwiched between two layers of plywood. This is the best way to insulate a timber frame. Super efficient, there's no cavities for insulation loss, and the best part about it, it keeps all of the timber frame exposed and on the inside, which is what we want. The sit panels are super efficient. On the walls, this is a four inch panel with an R23 rating. Up on the roof, we're doing six inch thick panels for an R value of R41. As you can see, see here, we have the openings all trimmed out and complete. These are gonna be massive full glass custom swinging doors with large windows on top. This whole octagon is gonna be almost all glass and all the sides can open right up in the summer months to create a really open feel for the project. And between the doors, this is gonna be all veneer stone siding. High class, high level of trim, it's gonna be a beautiful project. Our crews have been having a great time working on this project and seeing it come to life. And it's amazing to stand in here and see the 70 foot clear span expanse with the timber is crisscrossing and tangling, interlocking each other all, all over the place. It's quite a complex design, quite a feat of engineering, and one that we're all very proud of. We actually still have the marks on the floor here where we laid out the compression ring, the octagon, and used lasers to lift it straight up about 30 feet into the air into its final resting place. As you can see, it's now perfectly positioned the complexity of all the rafters tying into the compression ring. A well-built timber frame is all about the joinery. And at Great Country Timber Frames, joinery is our number one priority. <music> to complete a structure of this size, the joinery must be flawless. The joints must be tight. Everything has to come together and fit together in unison as one piece. That could not be done without the precision of our CNC machine coupled with the experience of our hand cut timber framers in the shop. All around, it's an impressive frame and only one that we can handle with our technology, our design and our engineering. We're back here on site at Sonny's Place. Now that the timber frame octagon is all enclosed and wrapped in the sit panels, the stone and the siding, we still wanted the outside to give a feel of the timber frame. 
so we've added the exposed rafter tails, the Douglas fir rafter tails. You can also see the timbers, how we design them coming through the glass. It's just a hint of what's to see on the inside. We started this project, conventional portion, back in the beginning of February and the timber frame in the beginning of March. It's now the beginning of May and just under three months the whole project's completed. The exterior details are complete. We've now finished all of the stone facade around the timber frame, the big glass doors. These doors are going to open fully in the summertime to allow a free air open structure. And then the metal roofing and the stonework, it turned out really, really nice. It all started with just a, a sketch on a napkin from the client saying, I want a big open structure timber frame for a 50 foot carousel. And that put our designers and our team at Great Country Timber Frames to the test. Designing a 70 foot clear span timber frame structure is no easy feat. But add to that, make it an octagon. Add to that, there's no interior posts. Add to that, we wanted to make all traditional joinery with no exposed steel. The strength of this timber frame is evident. You just look up at the 26 foot diameter compression ring in the boss pin and all the rafters that are coming into it. Inside this octagon, we have finished all of the timbers with a nice glossy coat of clear coat and also the walls and everything trimmed out with cedar siding. When it comes to timber framing, we treat each timber like a piece of furniture. Every piece stays exposed in the project and all of our decisions and our joinery designs and how everything comes together will make an impact for everyone who enters the building in the future. So it's really important to us to properly size the timbers, to select the joinery that looks nice and keep everything very clean. This project at Sunny's was one of the largest timber frame projects going on in the country and it demanded a lot of our resources and design and engineering. Over 30,000 board foot of select structural Douglas fir timbers all responsibly sourced from forests in the west coast. This is open to the public at Sunny's Place in Summers, Connecticut. Feel free to come by, check out the timber frame. There's also going to be a full scale carousel in this building. It'll be worth the trip. With their in-house team of engineers and designers, there's really no limits to a project. Whether it's a small barn or a 70-foot diameter clear span octagon, we can make it happen. If you're thinking of a timber frame project, be it large or small, visit our website at gctimberframes.com.